Well, Thomas O'Donnell is an energy and geopolitics expert and global fellow of the Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., joins us via Skype from Berlin. So it seems as though uh, European countries uh, are determined to convey a strong message against Russia, but uh, the reality of the situation seems to be that they need Russian energy supply, so they're trying to strike a balance between taking punitive action without causing too much instability in the markets. Uh, well, thank you for having me this evening. Um, uh, I would qualify what you're saying when you say they need it. Now, they've completely cut off the import of uh, crude oil, and now they've completely cut off the import uh, February 5th of all products, such as diesel, which was very important. It's not so much that Europe needs it. Europe can get the oil and gas, natural gas also they're doing pretty well. What the problem is, is the global market. So the Americans, Biden administration, wanted to finesse this in a way. If the total of Russian oil was taken off the global market, you know, it's one of the two or three superpowers of producing oil and gas up till now. So they wanted it to stay on the market, but to reduce the price outside of the EU, US and so forth where it's sanctioned. So it can go to India. I mean, Janet Yellen said a couple months ago to, when she was in India, buy all you want. It's OK with us. Just keep it under the price cap we set. And so far, that's been happening. And going forward, you know, we can talk about what's going to happen with that price cap. Right, so they've made it explicit that they've got no problem uh, that Russia might sell to other countries, which means that the objective has failed. They will still have continued uh, funds to uh, sustain the war in Ukraine. Yes, I mean, the idea here is not that, you know, you're not going to stop the war directly by cutting this off. This is one of many factors, just as one battle on the battlefield doesn't end a war. Um, in the first year of this, the prices were very high. There was a shock on the market. Prices were very high. Even, you know, by at sometimes cutting Russian oil and gas and gas to Europe was cut almost completely by Russia, actually, to punish Europe. But they still, the price was so high, they got a bunch of income, although the Russian budget has a significant deficit. Now, going forward, now that this is getting more under control, I, I predict what's going to happen is, you know, the Russian diesel and the crude oil has to take a much longer path to go where it's going. The prices are going to rise in the world later in the year, you know, as COVID lockdowns end in China and there's recovery and all this sort of thing. Eventually they will rise. Those price, the, you know, the prices are going to come up against those price caps. They're going to be reviewed. The ones that were set a couple uh, Friday are going to be reviewed every two months. If there's enough on the market from other sources, Venezuela is producing now, Iran is putting more on the market, there's many other sources. And in the Middle East, there's a whole bunch of new refinery capacity coming online and being ramped up. So if there's enough on the market so as not to cause a bigger problem for the West than for Russia, they will squeeze those price caps and will squeeze the profits of Russia. What's quite interesting here, this mechanism is all being set up it's through insurance on ships, as you know, is the main enforce, enforcement uh, mechanism. But really, it's now the European Union and the G7, the Western alliance behind Ukraine, that's in control of uh, put the, the future trajectory of the Russian oil system, not Mr. Putin, and natural gas as well. Thank you very much, Thomas O'Donnell, uh, for joining us there, Global Fellow of the Wilson Center in Washington. Thank you. You with the news hour live from London, much more still ahead on the program. Ecuador votes in a referendum that President Lasso hopes will help him tackle corruption, crime and environment.